This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to take a look at how to solve quadratic equations. And uh, we're not going to use the quadratic formula this time. Instead, we're going to use this method called completing the square. Um, here's a problem, a uh, standard problem that uh, many algebra students face. Uh, let's write it all down here. Uh, plus 10 equals negative 24. Now this is a quadratic equation and that is because there is a square here. Right? So if you have a square we call that a quadratic equation. Alright now here this is how the method works. I'm going to take you step by step. Uh, first thing you're going to do is try to get the x terms alone on one side. <clears throat> Alright so to do that what we are going to do is subtract 10 from both sides. So doing a little bit of algebra to move over the constant term. Alright, so if we do that, we're going to get x squared minus 6x equals negative 34. Alright, so we've got this uh, equation set up so that we have the letters on one side. All right, now here's a process that's used to complete the square. Now I know uh, if you go to Math Guide, uh, you could check out why you have to do this and what exactly is a, a perfect square trinomial, but that's what we're trying to create here. We're trying to create, or in other words, put a number right here. We're going we're gonna to add a number right here so it makes the left side a perfect square trinomial. Of course, we're going to have to add the same number to the right side to balance out the equation. All right, but first things first. Let's figure out what number we have to add to both sides. Well, what we do is we take this middle term, okay, so I'm going to take this middle term, and you divide it by 2. So you divide it by 2, and you get negative 3 in this case. And then you take that negative 3, and you square it. Why do you do this? Got to go to mathguide.com. It explains everything, but I'm just showing you the technique. So that means the number that I'm supposed to put right here to make the left side a perfect square trinomial is 9. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place a 9 on both sides. I'm going to add a 9 to the left side of the equation. I'm going to add a 9 to the right side of the equation. All right, now in doing so, that creates a perfect square here on the left side. Now the perfect square we're going to put in parentheses. Of course, we're going to add these two numbers together, and we're going to get negative 25. All right, so that's pretty simple to add the right side together. Now, to figure out what number to put here, if you're trying to figure out what is the perfect square, it's always going to be this number, half of the middle term, right? We took the negative 6 and divided it by 2 to get negative 3. That's always the number that's going to go right here. Okay, so we're going to put that number right in there. So I know it's going to be a negative 3. It always works that way, no matter what problem we have. All right, now that we've created a perfect square, what we are going to do is we're going to do whatever we can to get rid of the square. Now we know from algebra that the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So we're going to take the square root of both sides of this equation. Now when you take the square root of both sides, you do have to put a plus or minus on the right side because there is technically a positive answer and there is a negative answer to taking a square root. Alright, so what does that do to the left side? That square root and the square cancel each other. They're inverse operations. So you're going to get an x minus 3 over here. And you should know that when you take the square root of a negative, that uh, automatically generates an i. And the square root of 25 is 5. So the negative, so taking the square root of a negative, makes an imaginary number. That's where the i comes from. And the square root of 25 is 5. And keep in mind, we did have this plus or minus. So we still have the plus minus here on the left, I'm sorry, right side of the equation. Alright, well, we're almost done. Now what we have to do is get rid of this minus 3. Well, the opposite is to add 3. Now remember, you have to add like terms. I can't add 3 to i. They're unlike terms. So I can't do that. So I'm just going to 
line them up so we could kind of really demonstrate the fact that they're not like terms. So on the left side, we get x. The 3 and the negative 3 cancel. And on the right side, if I put it in a plus bi form, I put my real part first, and I put the imaginary part second. And there's your answer. All right, so that's, that's how you get the solutions using this method called completing the square. Now, uh, usually when people write the final solution, uh, they want to demonstrate the fact that there are two solutions. With the quadratic, there's always going to be two solutions, or one solution with multiplicity two. There's always two solutions. Well, what we're going to do is write them in these funny notation here, but one answer is going to be the 3 plus 5i. Okay, and then we'll separate the other answer with a comma, and the other answer would be 3 minus 5i. And there you go. We wrote down both solutions, 3 plus 5i, and the other one's 3 minus 5i. And we are, there you go. We got our two solutions. And that's all there is to it. Now, I, uh, this is fleshed out more thoroughly if you go to uh, mathguide.com and check out our lesson. Uh, but there are interactive quizzes, other activities, and, of course, other videos. Take care.